You're listening to the New Artist Workshop. I told you not to mention this weight. Why'd you call him Blob? I didn't call him Blob. I said Bub. The country needs you. I'm Canadian. Welcome back to your favorite podcast. Now, that's what I call a franchise. I'm Peter Mancuso. And I'm Viviana Metzger. And this is the show where Peter and I pick a film franchise and go through every single installment. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And to be clear, I made it very clear, but I want to make it even clearer. We're definitely, we're, we're defining a franchise as a series of films with at least four entries. Okay, so if it's a trilogy, not going to work. If it's just one movie with a TV show, not going to work. So, what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about the 2009 film X-Men Origins Wolverine. Um, You forgot the colon. Excuse me. (laughs) I I believe... (laughs) I thought it was implied. X-Men Wolverine... (laughs) X-Men Origins colon Wolverine. You you need to have that colon. And this is your one and only spoiler warning. Um, If you haven't watched the movie, do that before listening to this episode. But it did come out in 2009, so... It's the statue of limitations on it, I think, on spoilers is, is past. Um, so uh, let's kind of just jump right in. So this is the letterboxed uh, little blurb kind of describing the film. If, if you've never seen it, this kind of, you know, if you're perusing letterbox one night, this is like, I guess, kind of how to set it up. <clears throat> After seeking to live a normal life, Logan sets out to avenge the death of his girlfriend by undergoing the Mutant Weapon X program and becoming Wolverine. Uh, so some basic info here. It was directed by Gavin Hood. No idea who that is. Gavin or Gavin? Gavin. Oh, it's you. You put Gavin. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, maybe it is Gavin. Wait, hold on. Oh man, what is his name? What's in the name? Um, it was directed by Mr. Hood. Mr. Hood. It's Gavin. It's Gavin. Gavin. <laughs> okay. It's Gavin, and it was written by David Benioff and Skip Woods. Um, David Benioff going on later going on to be one of the showrunners for Game of Thrones. Nice. So nice. you see the the narrative quality here. <laughs> um do, of course distributed by 20th Century Fox. Um it was released in May of 2009. It was uh, made for about 150 million dollars and made about 370 million uh, at the international box office. So nice. So it it made a profit. It was pretty pretty successful. Yeah. Um. So my previous experience with the film, I loved the shit out of this movie as a kid. <laughs> I loved it. Um. I remember going to see it. Uh. With my friends oh, James. In theaters? I saw it in theaters. Oh, nice. nice. As a as a twelve year old boy <laughs> or however old yeah twelve years old, uh, with my friends, um, and then afterwards. We went to FYE, which was at the mall, yeah. and I bought The Dark Knight, which I never seen, which was a much better superhero movie. I watched that <laughs> at home later. Oh my and I but um at this time, I was trying to be a film reviewer, so I created like a free like that you know like that weebly.com or like whatever like the free website was in 2009. <laughs> Um, where I would do like little film reviews. I don't think it exists anymore, but I gave it a nine out of 10. Nice. Nice. Um, pretty, pretty high regard. It's pretty, I do not think it's a nine out of 10 now. (laughs) Um, but I loved this movie and I wrote this in my notes and we'll get to this later, but I feel like it's the most 2009 movie you could possibly make. (laughs) Like it, it just captures, I don't want to say captures the zeitgeist, but it, it, it just totally captures, like, like shitty action movie, like, trope, superhero tropes okay. um, and things like that. But what's your experience? This is not the first time you've seen this, right? No, no. Um, I, too, saw it as a, as a wee child. Um, Are you a wee little lad? <laughs> yeah, I think it was about 10. Um, or actually, turning 10, unless I saw it after my birthday. Who knows? Um, and I liked it a lot. I thought it was sad. 
uh, because they're. It's like it's very like, it's very Shakespearean. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really sad. But also, I really you know what my favorite part of this movie was as a kid. What? The fact that Will I Am is in it. <laughs> His his first role ever, I know. and probably his last. I don't know if he was in anything else after it, this. But. I don't know, but it was like because you were because like at it, at one point you're like listening to Boom Boom Pow, and then you turn on the TV and like and the it, next year there he is, fucking Will I Am in a superhero movie. So it, that, that that was me. I was gonna put this in the trivia, but I didn't. But since. You've brought it up. Um, <laughs> the reason Will I Am heard like this movie was happening and really wanted to be in it. Yeah. And he really loved Nightcrawler. Okay. So that's why his character has like those powers. Ah. Um, okay. Like being able to teleport. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, the way he goes. Slay. But we'll get there. We'll get there. That's fucked. We'll get yeah. there. Um, so a little bit of background on the on the film and its development. So uh, as always with these with these comic pictures... Uh, based off of specific storylines from the comics, particularly the origin storyline and the Weapon X storyline. Weapon X obviously is, deals with the whole, uh, you know, the Weapon X program and him getting the animantium. Deadpool. Um, Deadpool. Nope, Deadpool. Deadpool, I don't think has anything to do with it. Nope. Oh. Um, they just threw him in. They just threw him into this movie. <laughs> um, and then Origin, I believe, was like about him, like James Howlett in Canada, like, like, a century ago hmm. right so it's kind of you know um it, it kind of combines those two storylines to get, flush out what we had already kind of knew from the uh other films particularly x2 mm -hmm. this feels most like a prequel to that movie mm -hmm. um obviously and then um jackman um was much more involved and he collaborated on the script because yeah. he wanted to be more he wanted to be more of a character piece mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Um, He's really getting into it at this point. It's uh, this is his fourth Wolverine movie at this point. It's been yeah. nine years. Um, Benioff again, one of the writers, um, yeah. David Benioff. He originally wanted it to be R-rated, oh. but Hugh Jackman felt like that wasn't necessary, which is interesting because later on we do get R-rated Wolverine movie. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, Ryan Reynolds had been trying to develop a Deadpool movie since two thousand and three. Interesting. Um, because he really liked the character. Is he like a big comic buff? Like, I, I think at least just Deadpool. Okay. Um, and Deadpool's a lot of people's favorite comic book character, just because he's like breaks the fourth wall and he's snarky, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, and but that wasn't really getting off the ground. And then I think they were thinking about including him in this movie, so he was like, "Please let me play him." <laughs> I don't think he realized Jeez. what they were gonna do with the character. I don't think he even auditioned. I think he was just like, "Please let me be in it," and they're like, "Sure." Oh, nice. Um, and the script would go through a bunch of rewrites, like even as they were filming, okay. like Gavin Hood, I think said in an interview that like literally they would get like new pages, mm -hmm. like the night before shooting and then like oh. figure it out like the day of, <laughs> um, oh. which, uh, I think reflects, and I have some of this in my notes here. Like it's a very unfocused film in a lot of ways. Like they kind of want to do everything in the kitchen sink. If that's the case. I want to know who wrote in the scene where Hugh Jackman walks around ass naked. <laughs> I I don't know. I think there was a, such fan acclaim from X2 where we got to see him run around naked and, he was and like, stuff. Okay, I'll do it. Yeah. Is that is that your Australian accent? I guess so. He, Hugh Jackman just loves to be naked. I was trying I was trying to mimic like the greatest showman. <laughs> In that, he has an American accent. But it's like, it's so, like, the grandeur of it. He's like, oh! Oi! <laughs> this is the greatest show! That's what Hugh Jackman was hoping reviewers would say about this movie. <laughs> Look at my but, little butt! Yeah, he he really he really gets in shape, though, for these movies. Like, like you read about some of, the, like, the the workout, like, the diet. Yeah, like, like he that. really, like, there was no... I think he said in an interview, like, he was very proud of the fact, like, there's no, like... CGI touching up <laughs> of like his physique is the yeah. exact word he wears his physique yeah which just makes you think of his penis <laughs> what when someone says so like their what? physique like <laughs> but anyway not what that means no I know but so are they are the like claws like real in some like so, scenes or is it all completely CGI so 
So uh, we'll, we'll definitely get into this. Because but from, sometimes they looked like feathers. From from my <laughs> from my understanding, um, the claws, both in other films and this one, sometimes they're real, sometimes they're CGI. Okay. Usually, I think in the other films, they're usually CGI when they're like retracting or or being you know what I mean like okay. when they're going in and out because okay. like how do you do that yeah. practically. Um, but from my memory, most of the time in the original films, they're real, um, oh. which which makes the which really gives the films an authenticity. Mm. And that was it's really interesting. And we'll talk about this a little bit later with like you know as we get more and more into the series, like we can talk more about how the franchise is evolving, which is kind of hard after like two movies or even yeah. three movies. But well, I was just wondering because like I was wondering how he was like gonna hold them. Like, if you put, like, butter knives in between your fingers, like, I'm surprised he isn't... I don't know how they do it. That's a good question. But what I was going to say is that it's interesting because the X-Men film, particularly the first one, even though it's, like, very goofy, both then and now watching it, mm -hmm. like, the idea was, like, what if this, like, existed in the real world? Yeah. Right? And it's so interesting that, like, this movie comes out in 2009. And this is, like, the peak of, like superheroes as real movies like Iron Man and Dark Knight both just came out the year before oh yes yes and yet this is by far the silliest <laughs> and most unrealistic um, my point the reason why I bring all this up is the CGI for these for the claws mm -hmm. are is god awful it's so <laughs> bad it's like we've regressed <laughs> like it looks worse like I mean that's yeah. that that was one of the reasons why it was good that a lot of the times in the original movies it was practical because when it is CGI, it like kind of tricks your mind. Because like you have a mental image in your head of like what they're supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. Whereas in this, like especially the iconic scene that people pointed was like when he's in the bathroom. Yeah, it looked the, like feathers. It literally looked like, like like the I don't know like I don't know much must, about anime. It must have been the lighting. It was like the lighting looked weird. It looked white. Like they literally looked like. Feathers. It looked like PS2 graphics. <laughs> like like you know what I mean? Like it just yeah it, it, precisely. So it looked cool. like feathers. Like <laughs> it just did not look good at all. Um. But anyway, so why don't we start, ever, ladies and gentlemen, we know these past episodes have been a little unstructured. So I've tried to write my notes here a little, somewhat chronologically. We, yes, but we, we've been going back and forth um, on the structuring because at first we had like set categories. That's why if you go back, like we'll be like, oh, okay, so to the characters or to the story writing or whatever. Um, but now we're just going to try to do it kind of chronologically. Um which I think yeah. will give us a little bit more like um, like intentionality, and then also we, we can always go on tangent. It's our show; we can do whatever we want. Yeah, we could do on little it's tangents not if we like want. Broad, whereas like beforehand it was more like broad topics. Where now we can like really talk about something. I feel like I mean I definitely talked about things. Like Mostly the, mystique. Yeah, but like <laughs> <laughs> whose 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 absence in this movie is strongly felt. I wish no he was in the blue guy. There is no blue guys. We've had three movies of at least at least minimum one. X two, we got two. That's why it's called X two. <laughs> and the next one, the last stand. <laughs> she's only in it for like twenty minutes, and then she's gone. <laughs> oh, but we have Beast. Yeah, he was blue. Beast, Beast. Okay. No, I'm saying in this one, there's like no blue people. It's just well, I mean, I guess the trade off is like naked Hugh Jackman, but like. Well, that may be a price I'm willing to pay. <laughs> But anyway. That was a tight ass, let me tell you. Well, it's so great because the first thing I wrote is some partial nudity because when the movie comes on on Disney Plus, it's like lists why it's PG-13 and some partial nudity was there. And I was like, oh, I'm excited. I was I was nervous when he like jumped into the waterfall because like it shows the front. But I think they kind of like blurred that out a little bit. And they just, they turned his body slightly. <laughs> Like, all right, stunt double, when you jump off this giant cliff, I wonder if that was real or if that was CGI. Maybe, like, partially. Like, you know how, like, some people, like... Um I hope it was just him, like, on wires, like, not being, not falling, but just, like, stationary and green screen in the yeah, air. And him just, yeah. like, waving his arms, like, going, whoa! <laughs> like how they used to in, like, the 70s. They would go, like, ah! Well, some film background um, from my end is I watched a behind the scenes for the Wizards of Waverly Place movie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's like that scene. I think I watched that in film school, yeah. <laughs> there's that uh -huh. scene where they're like jumping on the rocks over the lava, 
But like in real life, it was only like six feet off, or six feet, six inches off the ground. Movie magic. I know. Isn't that crazy? It, so you're telling me that he, <laughs> are you telling me that they didn't actually fight on top of the Statue of Liberty in the first one? Oh man. Are you telling me that was just a CGI? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. They might have they might have like talked to the president and they were like, Hey, can we use this? And he's like, Okay. Bill Clinton. It's so weird <laughs> that the first movie came out during Bill Clinton's presidency. Because it came out in two thousand. So we always think of like, oh, like Bill Clinton's a nineties president and George Bush is the No, but Bill Cl- that was Bill Bill William Jefferson Clinton. <laughs> His middle name is Jefferson. Yes. All right, anyway, back to the Try to have structure here. So let's go to the this very beginning of the film. Are okay. I oh shit, you're right. Okay. So we start the movie off. It's Canada in the 1840s, <laughs> yes. I think. So we, we start with Logan, aka James Howlett. I don't know. Okay. I mean, if someone wants to message us and let us know, I have no idea how where does his name Logan come from? Is that supposed to be his middle name? Is that just like a nickname? Yeah. Like I don't know how you get Logan from I don't know how you get Logan from James Howlett. Yeah, because I get the Wolverine because of a little story that she told, but like, where the hell did Logan come from? Also, I'm very, I would like a a movie that goes deeper into that era. Like mutants, like, like pre-20th century? Sure, but specifically the brothers, because like, why is Victor jealous of James... Or, like, seemingly jealous of the attention that he's getting from his father, but his father isn't his father. And then Well, he just has a better life, right? There's... Because he's with this other dude. I also, guess Also, I don't know so, if you noticed. I thought they were brothers. Like They, they are, together. but I think I think he's... No, I... See, this is what's confusing. So, the movie feels like it was being written the night before shooting. <laughs> because I, I, I was also confused about that. I think the impression that you're supposed to get is, like, he may be, like... Step helps at, no helps at the house because he's like oh you're still what? here because when the, when 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 this when sorry when James's father in quotes yeah like now he's not real father yeah. like the skinny guy yeah 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 um he has other attributes I don't know why I'm calling him skinny <laughs> guy um he's like oh Victor man. you're still here like maybe like he's like comes and helps like clean the gutter I don't know oh um, that changes everything because, because I think he's jealous because he's like oh like you get to be with like this dad yeah. but I'm stuck with this other dad also I, 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 I liked how I don't know if this was intentional it definitely was intentional with the real dad <laughs> But, like, he looks like he what looks Victor's. Like no, but then the other dad, like, kind of looks like Wolverine. Uh, okay. Like, his hairstyle kind of reminded me of, like... Maybe. Hugh Jackman's, like, beautiful little luscious head of hair that he has. He Every movie, his hair gets hair. longer and longer. Yeah, he does have luscious hair. I wonder what conditioner he uses. That'd be good to know. All right. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> so so Logan's... Like, or, or, excuse me, James. He's in bed. He has a fever. He's a little pussy. Yeah, yeah. He's well, like... He's not a pussy. He's just sick. He's like... <laughs> Father, I'm so cold. <laughs> um. Anyway, so then Victor's father comes over. Apparently, for no reason. I don't know like what causes this to happen tonight. Like, he, why tonight? He's like, he must know. He comes over and he, I, I forget, does he shoot the guy or yeah, stab him? Yeah. He shoots him, and Logan runs down and he's like, Aah! his little his little mini Wolverine yell, and he and he starts to grow his. I think that was the first time. Yeah, that uh, precisely. Was, that was his first time. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, they say, and I, I do like that because the whole point is that, like, like if it's supposed to be, like, a analogy for puberty, mm-hmm. that, like, it happens during moments of, like, great stress. Mm, yeah. Or, like, you know, like, emotional whatever. Um, like, if you have a giant zit on your face the day before the eighth grade cotillion. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> that's, that's a problem. With people Does that happen to you? <laughs> that sounds very specific. Not necessarily, but... It could be. <laughs> um, And I do like his little bone. The bones look better than the his metal claws. Like the CGI bones. The bones are so creepy. It is really creepy. I, but I do think that's cool. Like, Because I'm sure when Wolverine was first created, I don't think... The idea was that it was bone claws covered in anime. Like mm-hmm. I, I think when he was probably first created in the comics. Yeah. Um, his first appearance, I believe, being in the Hulk first. Oh. In one of like the Hulk comics. Um, that he's just like a dude with metal claws. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I think in later comics, I think one of these like comics that this was based on, they were like, oh, actually, he's always had claws, but they weren't always animantium. Mm. Um, though, this is really nitpicky, what? but I don't like like the claws are clearly cylindric. Yeah. But the but the but like when it's the animantium, bone. they're flat. Yeah, yeah. So like yeah. like did they squish them? <laughs> <laughs> like if they were shaped like like little cones, they, they would have been. But in a man team, that would make sense. But they're like they're like slender. They're like knives. Yeah, they would have looked more like like the ladies, I guess. Like, like in the X two, you mean? Like yeah, with their the, fingernails. The kinda? Asian lady, yeah, she had like the really long fingernails. Yeah, um, but anyway, so yeah, then Logan's like, Aah! and he goes and kills his father. But that, but he didn't know he was his father until he killed him. And he's like, <laughs> like, you're my son. And then he dies. <laughs> so I'm... Okay. Because when I first saw this, not like the first time, but like when I... When we were watching it, what I thought was like, oh, the... Maybe the dude is his stepdad and he wants to... He wants him to find out, blah, blah, blah. Because like the mom obviously knows. But now that you're saying that Victor was the help... Me? I don't know. That's I. I don't know. I don't know. But if that's the case, then she was married to that guy. But then she had a little love affair with the other guy, and then she had both of his babies because they both have the little bones. Yeah. The little bones. <laughs> I think. I don't know. That's a good question. Well, here's the question: Is is it both their moms, or are they half brothers? Is it the same father with two different mothers? Like, like oh. Victor has his own mother with the dad, but then the dad later on, like a couple years later, slept with the other mom, and then and then, but she didn't like it was like his the, the bastard. Yo no sé. I it's it's very confusing. Um, so anyway, so they leave. Also, I wrote here, screaming kid Logan is hilarious <laughs> because well because Hugh Jackman's Wolverine has like an iconic yell that he's like. Ah! Ice cold but, shower. But this guy <laughs> That's right, you remember it. Yeah. But but the kid kinda does like a kid version. He's like, no! <laughs> Um, and he runs across the room. But it looks like he's gliding. Like, he looks like they put him on a skateboard. <laughs> which is like out of the frame. He just like runs like no! and then he you know stabs the father, and the mom's like, What the fuck are you? <laughs> Anyways, so they run away. And Sabertooth and Wolver Sabertooth and Wolverine are brothers. Yes. Which this is where th this movie in general is where the X Men continuity famously starts to like. It, it doesn't break yet. Yeah. But it becomes very confusing. Because he. Because he's in the first one, but they never. Oh, that's right. Allude yeah, yeah. to this. Yes, 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 yes. Like obviously Logan doesn't wouldn't remember, but wouldn't Sabretooth be like, "You're my." Also, he turns blonde. That's the same person. Yeah, it's supposed to be the same person. Oh, my frick. Also, you can no longer claim well, that... Well, no. In the past, you have made claims that Wolverine is just... That's just a name, that he's just a dude. But he is always sniffing. His brother <laughs> is running on all fours. They are part something. Okay? <laughs> He's well, I think they're, they're, they're just mutants. They just... got the super hearing. They got the sniffing going they're, on. They're, they're animalistic. The climbing. They're animalistic, but I don't think they're meant to literally be like half man, he, half... He's <laughs> like when, half badger. Remember when, remember when <laughs> T. Jackman thought that wolverines were wolves? <laughs> um, yeah. But Oh, man. But, but He's always sniffing. He is always sniffing. But, but anywho, so this is where the continuity starts to get like confusing, where it's like... Oh, he, again, it doesn't break it, but it just goes like, "Oh, well, why? Did, why has this never come up before?" Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot going forward with other movies uh, in the franchise, but this one especially. Mm -hmm. This is where it starts. Um, it is cool to see um, that mutants have been around for a long time. Yeah, that it's not necessarily just a re like. I would imagine like a long time, meaning like maybe like. The past couple hundred years because mm -hmm. the whole idea is like I, I don't think they've been around since the dawn of humanity because the whole point is that the, the next evolution yeah but i kind of like them being like within the past like 500 years yeah you know what i mean like i which like I, it, it's I, cool to imagine like the renaissance with like a mutant yeah you know which i think is interesting because like 
why hasn't this really come up before? Like, why is it such a big thing now? But, you know, I think we... I guess it's just like if more you, and more people keep, it keep they keep emerging because it's like evolution, really, like passing on the traits. You know what I mean? Yes, that and then also people are more spread out. But then also like if you really, if you really want to like hypothesize, um, you know, you could look at something like Interview with the Vampire. Like like they were around, but people just thought it was witchcraft or like like the Salem Witch Trials. So you know? I think like, people knew about mutants, but they wouldn't call them mutants. They'd be like, like, oh, there's a witch. Witches, or like, yeah. Or, or a, mon like, a weird monster. Like Yeah, or like, you know, because there's no like training until good old Xavier, um, I'm sure some of them probably hurt themselves at some point. Like, imagine Scott living in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't and know. And there's no sunglasses in the 1800s, <laughs> so he's pretty lucky he was born when he was. Yeah. I also um, okay. was going to say, well, you know what? Um, this is not what they were trying to do here. <laughs> but if we're going to look at this as being an analogy for being gay, Oh, oh yeah, right? I, forgot, I forgot about that. Yeah, but this is, this is actually like a real—I uh, don't want to say sociological theory, okay. but but like this is something I was reading about where it's like how people complain like oh like all these kids like all these kids are gay or trans now like back when I was younger like there were no gay. Oh, it's okay. that they were, but they just, just weren't comfortable undercover, like yeah. like coming out. Yeah. Um, and they compared it to <laughs> like being left-handed. Like the rates of people yeah. being left-handed has gone up. In the past, like, 50 years. But it hasn't. It's because kids were, like, forced to be right-handed. Yeah. That, like, if you were left-handed, they would force you to write with your right hand. Right? So, it's, like, it's the same idea where it's, like, <laughs> mutants. Like, for all we knew, there were a bunch of mutants, but they were just forced to either hide or they were, like, burned at the stake. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Doesn't now they're more able to, like, it's the whole idea of evolution and, yeah. and natural selection. They're, yeah. they're, they're more of them now yeah, because more of them are having themselves. kids. Yeah. But doesn't your name mean, like, left-handed, like, evil or something? My last name, Mancuso, I believe is some variation of Italian for left-handed. But not meaning left-handed, <laughs> just like left-handed, but, like, particularly meaning, like, sinister or, like, duplicitous. Yeah. It's like people with left hands. Mm -hmm. Which is so weird. Which is a fact. Anyway. It's not a fact, Obama. Was. Um, <laughs> Obama was left-handed? I think so, yeah. Oh. It, I'm very surprised when I learned that people are left-handed. Because, like, I feel like... Right hand is so common. If if you told me Obama was a mutant, I'd be less surprised <laughs> I am now that he's left handed. Anyway, what? so um so anyway, so then we get this cool montage <laughs> where Oh my god, the montage <laughs> where they fight in all these American wars. <laughs> Um, I mean, to be fair, World War One and Two are not strictly American wars, but I think the implication that like they're they're a D Day. and the Canadians were a D Day, and and I think the Canadians fought in World War One. Um but they also find the Civil War, the American Civil War, and <laughs> good also thing, they're in, good thing they put them on the Union side. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, um, oh, because they can't be bad guys. Well, well then we well, get to Vietnam. That would have been that would have been something to retcon later. <laughs> well, because like I think this is very much that, like that didn't age well. I think it's very much like yeah. I don't think it would have aged well the minute it came out if they did that. <laughs> Um, but here's the thing is like, I, this wasn't so long ago, but I feel like we've come such a long way mm -hmm. where it's like, in terms of movies where like, oh, well, we want to do this thing. Well, oh, well, we have to associate with America mm -hmm. because this is an American audience and they only care about Americans. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like if this movie came out today. Like he would just be Canadian. Like, like they wouldn't have to like, oh, he's in the American military. Also, why do they do this? Like, just cause they're killers. Like, 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 what's their motivation for just, like, being in the American military for, like, I don't know, like, 150 years? Like, 100, you know, 25 years. And also, how did no one notice? But also, like... Well, it's only a war, and, you know, it's only recently that we've been in a perpetual war since, like, the, <laughs> since the 40s. You know, I'm saying, like, their <laughs> commanding officers get old, and they don't. Oh, well, they don't have to see them. I was, I thought you meant, like, more, like, has no one noticed they get, like, shot in the face, and, like, they're, like, fine. Yeah, how did they... Unscathed. There's like a, th a scene Unscathed in the through D Day. There's a there's a part that in the Civil War section. I think he gets shot right through the chest, and Logan just like looks down. He's like, oh. <laughs> because let me tell you, that is not what that is not the narrative that they have in Saving Private Ryan. So <laughs> yeah, because if those guys were there, I think it would have gone a lot better for all the guys who got, who were who died on D Day. <laughs> Literally picking up their guts. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. 
Um, but I, it is kind of cool, like just like as being someone who likes history, I do always get a kick out of seeing like fictional characters like being inserted into historical moments. I thought um, I thought it was funny, like in Shang Chi, they do the same thing, like the the Twelve Rings, like they've been tried, every important yeah, moment throughout like history, the Cuban Missile Crisis, and like it's, all this stuff. I'm like, what? It's 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 like it's it's what I'll call like the Forrest Gump effect, where it's like. <laughs> Like, really? This one guy was at every important <laughs> historical moment from, like, from like basically 40 years, from like 1950 to 1990. He's, he's at, he, he's in Vietnam. He teaches Elvis to dance. He, <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't do that with Wolverine. Like, he taught Charles Manson how to be a murderer. Like, like, I'm surprised we didn't get that scene. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, a little silly. But we do um, get a little bit more of this in the other Wolverine, in other um, X Men movies later on. Because in The Wolverine, we see him in World War II again, but in Japan. Oh. In Days of Future Past, the whole, the whole yeah, idea is that he gets sent back in time, Russian so he wakes up. And, uh, no, Paris. Uh, yes, Washington. during the, during the um, um, like peace treaties for Vietnam. Mm. Um, but, but anywho. Um, so we have this montage and it le- kind of leads up to the Vietnam War. Yeah. Um, and uh-oh, Sabretooth likes to kill. <laughs> he gets some sick pleasure because at first we see him kind of smiling, killing people with the Nazis. And we're like, yeah. okay, well, those they're Nazis. They're Nazis. <laughs> but, but then we go to the Vietnam and he's, he's killing all these Vietnamese and he, lo- he loves it. He's up in that helicopter and even Logan's like, dude. Like, bro, these are these are not like soldiers. These are literal people just like going to school and going to. See, we work. talked about like, them being in Saving Private Ryan. But now imagine them in Apocalypse Now, <laughs> <laughs> because basically those characters are already in Apocalypse Now. Like as like yeah. um as Robert Duvall's character, like and Victor is like. <sighs> I love the smell of napalm in the morning, <laughs> and then just carpet bombs yeah. an entire and, village. And also, like, we're we're meant to like, even though S- Sabretooth is not like they try to kind of have their cake and eat it too, where he's like a villain, but he's also like an antihero. Like at the end of the movie, like we're kind of meant to be like he's like an antihero, well, right? He, he loves his brother. He he loves his brother. Um, he also loves to rape women apparently because oh. because that's what they try to pass over the beginning of the movie. Him literally like. Trying to rape this woman. <laughs> I'm I'm glad that that. And then Logan tries to stop him, but then they all start attacking him, and Logan like defends him. Well, you know, I'm I'm glad that he just threw her on the bed, and that it wasn't anything else. Because maybe he was like, "You need a good night's sleep." <laughs> yeah, because I never. <laughs> and that's all I want to do. I never picked up on that before, so you know, it's a little less traumatizing, I think, for her and for me. Um, but. Yeah, it's a little weird to me that they are just, like, serial, like, army men and, like, literally anything they could get their hands on uh, because, as we see later... They would do so well in, like... Like, why are they only fighting in... Well, I guess because they're supposed to be keeping a low profile and they don't yeah. really start doing covert op stuff until later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, if this is the case... So many black ops have happened since like the fifties. Like, why weren't they involved like assassinating like like communist leaders and and like you know what I mean? Like depose like like removing heads of state in the Middle East. Like <laughs> because the montage was only supposed to be so long. Because it was supposed to just be recognizable, so people in American cinemas could go. They're like, oh, well, yeah. Vietnam. Oh my God, World War Two. Yeah. Oh my God, he's in. He's at D Day. If it was black ops, we wouldn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, but, what? Wait, when did this happen? Um, no, but I think it's... But like, it's, I can't believe they're making this stuff up. It's like, no, it actually really happened. <laughs> no, actually. Um, no, but I think it's not funny, but like, kind of like strange that they do this because obviously as we see later on, like it affects them. Just, you know, they're still humans, maybe not humans, Technically, but like there's still, you know, human emotion. They still experience the like, human condition. He has like PTSD from all these wars, you know? It's like, what? <laughs> and do you think he has PTSD even though he can't remember because it's like the body remembers? Right? Don't they say oh, that? Later about on? P- well, yeah, I just mean like later on oh, too. For like, sure, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, because we see like. Because I like in the first movie the throwaway line of like, 
when they're talking about how old he is. Yeah. And he's like, oh, he could be even older than you. I didn't realize they meant, like, he's 150 years old. <laughs> 160 years old. I think I roughly worked it out so that, like, if you said it took place, or, like, it's supposed to take place in the 80s, that, like, they're roughly between 140 and 150 years old. Yeah. Like, Roughly. Ballpark. Roughly, yeah. And then um, Victor's obviously like a, a little bit older. But um, then they get um, sentenced to death. Probably, unfortunately, probably not for trying to rape the girl, but because they like attacked other soldiers, unfortunately. Yeah, because he was like turned. I don't think anyone would have really. American soldiers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously that's, that's not going to kill them. That's a classic war crime. It's like, it's a classic. <laughs> like, it's in the book of war crimes. I, it's the first one. You know, I don't know. So yeah, that's definitely not it. Also, um, why did he make friends with a rat? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful transition. So they're sitting in a jail cell. I don't know if he made friends with a rat. I think he's just hanging he's out with them. He's climb all over him. Well, he's an animal. He doesn't care. <laughs> anyway, so this is when we get introduced to the real villain of the film, uh, William Stryker. Who, I understand that, uh, obviously, this is a younger version, and they just use, cast a different actor, but he looks nothing like William Stryker in X2, <laughs> um, who was played by Brian Cox, who is kind of, like, shorter, heavier. This guy's, like, a little bit taller, a little more s- slender. And, and glasses. Also, where are his glasses? Yeah, where are his cute little, like, he has his little glasses. And also, I will say that I don't buy that this is the same character. Like, he doesn't play it the same way at all. Like, he kind of plays a like, generic evil scientist, mm-hmm. whereas Brian Cox in X2 brought so much, like, humanity to the character. Because of his son, yeah. Because of it. But I just, not just, like, on, like, the page. I, I don't mean, like, the writing, but, like, like the, the performance. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, this guy, I, I forget this guy's name. But he's, like, one of those actors where it's like, oh, yeah, I've seen him before. He, but he just kind of does a generic, generic 2009 action movie evil scientist performance. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. It's like the most 2009 movie ever. He looks very familiar to me and I can't figure out why. Like, he's not the guy who plays Hellboy. Like... No, 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 no. That's that's Ron Perlman. I know. I'm just saying, like, he looks really familiar and I cannot place why. Um... Does he he not look He does. I I, I 100% agree. I I can't remember what he's been in. Not... Not this movie, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> is he just familiar because you've seen this before? No, I agree that he has. I definitely have seen him in other stuff, but again, he's only been like he he's never been like a lead in an Oscar winning movie. He's probably just been like bit bit players in like random movies. Hey, don't, don't smite him like that. <laughs> hey, there's no small parts, only small actors. Um, but anyway, so he comes to them. Um. And he's like, oh, I heard you, you know, basically he, he heard about this, that like they, they, they don't die and they're killers. And he's like, I'm putting together a special team with special privileges. I kind of like, this is like the CIA war criminal version of the Avengers <laughs> yeah. where Nick Fury is like, I want to talk to you about the, the war crimes initiative. Like <laughs> basically he recruits them to be part of his like covert team doing whatever. But we only get to see one mission Doing that they do. Doing evil things. Doing evil things. Um, oh, wait. So wait. What? Let's put a pin in that. Hold on. He was in Wonder Woman, uh, Big Eyes, John Adams, Game Night. John Adams! Yes. He plays Hitchcock. Samuel Adams. That's uh, where. That's his other big thing I've seen him in. Yes, he he's Sam in, Adams in John Adams. He was in both Wonder Womans, too. Really? Mm. Okay. Okay. I take it back. Good for you. So What's his Danny, name? Well, uh, Daniel Salas Huston. Good for you, Daniel Salas Huston. <laughs> Are you sure it's not Houston? It's H-U-S-T-O-N. Isn't that like John Houston? Also, the director is also H-U-S, and it's pronounced Houston. Well, I thought Houston has a... Oh, who cares? <laughs> um... <laughs> But but anyway, so we get so we only get to see one mission of theirs. Yes. Um, in and this, Africa, no less. In in in, in Lagos. <laughs> he says Lagos, but it's Lagos. <laughs> in Lagos. In Lagos, Nigeria. Um, and this is where we get introduced to the Motley Crew mm-hmm. with Will I Am. Will I Am. The super strong guy with the Eminem bleach blonde hair. <laughs> um, Agent Zero, who's yes. like a superpower is just. Being able to shoot a gun. Like, I don't know what his superpower is, really. I think, I think his superpower is just, like, being awesome. Because, like, yeah. he can, like, shoot a gun from really far away really quickly. He also jumped over the fence. 
like in a back flip, front flip type of thing. And yeah, I don't know. But we, then we get introduced to the most important member of the group, Deadpool. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, but not Deadpool. You know what I mean? He's a live pool. I will say, though, that, like, <laughs> pre- pre- obviously this is not the Deadpool from the comics, but if you were going to do, like, this is the exact Deadpool I would imagine that they would do in 2009. <laughs> that, like, this is, like, exactly what he would be produced in 2009. Um, why is Will I Am in this movie? <laughs> I know we talked about it before in the background, because but he's, cool. he's not a good actor. Because he's Will I Am. Later in the movie, when they go to see Gambit and he does the car trick, he's like, that's cool. <laughs> also, he, he he likes to go. Damn, damn. Um. So it's just, it really is this motley crew. I don't know because the Black Eyed Peas uh, they were like on a hiatus or going on a hiatus, and you know Fergie was doing her thing. So will I? Am will was, I? She was being Fergalicious. He, he was trying to find his own thing, you know, and like. Justin Bieber was like kind of there. So what does Justin Bieber have to do with well, any of this? Because I have that song, you know, it's like, I got that power, 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 power. You know, like it's on Just Dance. So, so <laughs> what is this? So, so you're basically saying he. So basically, this is the start of his. This is the. His maybe this. Maybe this is. origin story. This. <laughs> maybe he was like, I need to really pivot into music because I don't think this acting thing is going to work out. Yeah. Um, He's just trying something new. Jeez. But, but anyway, so they go to Nigeria to commit war crimes. Um, uh, and, and what I was saying about Deadpool is they, they try to make him funny and like a wise ass. Like I will say, yeah. like obviously it's not like the Deadpool from the comics where it's like ultra irreverent, breaking the fourth wall. Um, but I, but well, it's not his movies. He's, it, that's true. He, he's more of a, he's more of a sassy ninja. You know, he has he has his sword. He comes in when you go when they leave the elevator, oh, that and they're all crazy. shooting. He's just like that was crazy. And he splits the bullet in half yes. and, and shoots the two guys. Like this is not like Deadpool at all. I don't know, I never, but it's just like I've never seen it. I didn't really like have an interest in seeing it. And then it's when, pretty good. Well, I mean, we'll I get did, to it. When I did, like my parents would let me see it because it was rated R. But Deadpool came out, weren't you? Oh, you were only you were still in high school. I guess. Because it came out in 2016. Because I, w- I was... Because I was a freshman in college, so... I was you were, you were still in high school, right? I, like, I wasn't interested in watching it until the second one came out. Mm. And then I was like, oh, well, I haven't seen the first one, so... But when the know, second whatever. one came out, you were in college, so... Why why were your parents telling you you couldn't watch no, no, it? Wait, when did it come out? The second one came out in 2018. The first one came out in 2016. Oh, well, then I don't. But also, I think it's really 16. You would have been legally allowed. You you would have turned uh, 17, right? Uh, in 2000, I don't in 2017? Know. Scratch or? that. No, I don't know. I just never <laughs> seen it. All right. Well, well, whatever the reason. Um, also, I, I noted here, by this point in the movie, Logan has barely had, like, any lines. Huh? Like, for a movie that's all about him, he, he has less to do so far than he has, like, in the other movies. Which yeah. are supposed to be ensemble part, uh, ensemble movies. Um, he's really he's what? very passive in in this you know movie what? so far. Yeah, maybe he's very passive, and then once he loses his memory and stuff, now he's like, I gotta take action of my own life. You know, <laughs> I got I gotta just like because he is. Let me tell you, he is railed in this movie. Something else. Uh, poor like, choice of words. Oh, sorry. Um, he's <laughs> he's really fucked over in this movie. Like he, like this is a sad movie. Like he loses so much. I wept. Yeah, and he doesn't even remember any of it. He doesn't even remember. That's the kicker. It, it that is the kicker. So, uh, so Logan's barely said anything. And the reason why I bring this up is because. We don't really know where he's coming from or how he feels about everything. Like, if they ever cut to him, he just has, like, his blank, like, Hugh Jackman face. <laughs> so so when he suddenly grows a conscience, it's like, where did that come from? Yeah. Like, like, we don't know why he feels this way suddenly. Like, there's no moment of epiphany where, like, through, like, the performance and the editing, you get a sense that, like, he feels uneasy about all of this. Like, well, so it's, like, just in the past, like, 30 years or so. And it's, like, well, you, you've been killing people nonsensically for, like... 100 years now. <laughs> like 120 years. Yeah, so it's like, I don't understand, but also at this point, I, I remember that his name was James because he's like, come on, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. And I was like, Jimmy. Oh, yeah, that's right. I thought he was just being funny, like Jimmy Ball. Where did Logan come from? I, yeah. Also, how do you know his last name is Howlett? I just know that from the comics. Oh, okay. You just like, 
Yeah, yeah, I just know that. Because they never say it in the movie. Either. No, no, I just, I just know that. Um, the wonderful green screen in this movie. <laughs> the, like I said, the most uh, 2009 movie. Um, you, you I could think s- they spent all their budget on getting Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds. And then they were yeah. like, oops, we ran out. We ran out of money. I was saying, like, <laughs> visually, this movie looks worse than the... I, I don't even... It... I, I Part of me wants to say it's worse than the first movie. No. But the first movies also didn't look great. But I would say the movie gets a pass because it was 2000. It was 2000. I was saying, it's 2009. Yeah. Even if those aren't on par, mm-hmm. it's been nine years. <laughs> Surely the CGI, like, it clearly was just like, well, I think what happens, um, what probably happened here, is, and I didn't know this, it's actually really cool, is like, if you look at, like, the MCU, for example, the CGI in the original Iron Man, mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, actually looks better than something like Civil War, which came out later, mm-hmm. and the reason why is because back then they tried to do as much practically as possible, mm-hmm. so when they did have CGI, they put, like, a lot of money into it, Yeah. whereas now... Almost like the entire movie is like like I don't think Robert Downey Jr. has been in like the full Iron Man suit since like Iron Man Two. Like oh, wow. that was a whole thing. Is like really? basically they just like he just wears like a they like CGI over him yeah, all the time. Yeah, like the the black suit with the little dots. Yeah, they on just, it. yeah exactly. Whereas the original like especially because that movie now we're going on a tangent, but like that movie was not expected to be like a phenomenon. No, yeah. Right? It was It was basically one of the few characters that Marvel his, still owns. It his uh, career out of the gutter, honestly. It, it, was with an, it was with a comedy director, John Favreau, who at that point directed, like, Swingers, <laughs> Elf, you know, Robert Downey Jr., who had been, like, you know, his career was in the toilet. It, Iron Man was, like, a second-rate character in terms of the public consciousness. Yeah. Um, like, comic book fans knew him and liked him, but, like, people, who do people know? Like, like Spider-Man, a, yeah. X-Men, Fantastic Four, Not a classic. Hulk one you would think of like, yeah. as a non Um dude. So, but my point is that the budget was not huge. So they really had to get creative. So there's a lot of scenes where, like, obviously, if he's, like, flying around, it's not a real <laughs> suit. But my point being is that I imagine something similar happened here where, like, the original film, they tried as much as they could to do things, like, practically. Because mm-hmm. in the year 2000, CG, you know, like, was still, it was still in its infancy in a lot of ways or its growing pains is maybe a better yeah. way to put it. It was going through puberty. <laughs> it was very awkward. Okay. Um, but with this, I, I imagine there's like more VFX shots. Mm-hmm. So therefore like the budget gets spread out. Yeah. So that's why you have like really crappy green screen CGI. Yeah. And there's a lot of green screen in this movie. Like yeah. a lot. Well, I would imagine like if they're basically getting a shot list and script like the day before, then you know, it's, it's not really well thought out. So by the time it gets to the editing table, it might just be like... You just gotta make it work. You do need you- to do this quickly. Like, we need to get this done because we need to see basically what we have and what we need to go back and reshoot or whatever. And so it's just like, you know, it's just like rendered whatever, but it's not keyed very well. Like Yeah. Um. <clears throat> all right. So anyway, so moving on. So he, he's like, I'm leaving. I'm leaving the group. Yeah. So he flash forward a couple years and he's found a woman. Yeah. And he's just living his life being a lumberjack. Literally like like literally in the mountains of Canada. Like Like literally. Not not like not like on the the Canadian Rockies, yeah. Yeah, not like on the base of a mountain like Lake Tahoe, but like like a mountain goat is his neighbor. Like (laughs) Yeah. Um Anyway, he's just living his life, being Paul Bunyan, whatever. <laughs> um, and this, this, uh, this is somewhat of a side thing. What? You're gonna go through the whole movie? <laughs> I have my notes. I don't know. I'm going through it. It's okay. I have a lot of notes in the beginning. Are you gonna let them watch the movie? Or are you gonna just tell them what happened? <laughs> hey, you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know. Write us in if you feel differently. I feel so far this is very structured. <laughs> Um, so, also, this movie continues the age-old tradition of Wolverine waking up screaming. <laughs> yes. Like, I think we've done it this every single movie. Yes. But just like the, ah! and Boy, it's like, oh, he stopped. almost stabbed someone that he cares about. Well, in the first one, he does care, stab someone yeah. he cares about. Well, this time he just scratched her, but. Yeah. Or or some other time he scratched her. No. Oh, no, it was in that no, sleep, but he didn't yeah. do, like, the full, like, ah! when he scratched no, she, her. She, like, got up before that happened, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um... 
But anyway, so yeah, he's living his life, but then, uh-oh, Stryker comes to find him with this great line. I smell government. <laughs> so Logan is a confirmed libertarian. Um, so Stryker's like, oh, someone's killing our groove. You, you gotta do something about it. And Logan's like, fuck you. Also, Agent Zero shoots his cigar, which... <laughs> Whoa, the crazy action, man. It's like, again, very 2009, like. Um, I understand it's part of his character and that he likes stogies very much, but is it really the safest idea to be smoking a, a stogie? <laughs> like a dry forest. While, while, while being a lumberjack? <laughs> Probably not. But he, I mean, if he, he doesn't care. Um, <laughs> then we get to hear the, the sexy Native American story. Yes. Um. And apparently people were mad, uh, rightfully so, um, oh. that the actress mm -hmm. is not Native American, but that character is supposed to be Native American. Oh, really? So then, then, you know what she did? She did a thing. She was like, no, like, my, like, great, great grandmother is Native American. Oh, man. Uh, so we hear this story, and that's where we get, like, the Wolverine idea. Okay. okay. Um, which I apparently I think it's, I think this is somewhat of a real, it, they, I think they changed some of it, but yeah. from, from what I was researching, I believe that... But I don't want to call it folktale. Like that myth mm -hmm. is somewhat accurate. Oh, cool. Um, and by accurate, I mean that some tr some cultures believe that not accurate like that happened. Yeah. Of like the, the moon coming down. and yeah. I, did, I didn't know she was supposed to be like Native American. Well, Native Canadian. I Native well, American, like <laughs> the Americas. Ameri yeah. <laughs> Indigenous. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, go, go Logan. But, you know, it's not all roses because then the next day... Victor comes to find her, and, and in a, he's in a desperate need of a manicure, <laughs> but he does not care. He kills her. Logan finds her. Yeah. And and this is like a classic example of like that trope in movies. Like, like I don't know what you call it, like man pain. Where basically like you have a female what? character who, and I guess this kind oh. of isn't really a thing because what like she them is, losing. is like losing yeah. and it's usually like. Um, Isn't that called? It's the, called the fridging. Fridge? Fridging, because yeah. there's a there's a there's a. I think we may have even discussed this in a the, previous episode. The football but, player, the fridge. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no. no. And I think it's a Green Lantern comic where no, like his I girlfriend know. gets killed by the villain and, and she gets stuffed in a freezer. Yeah, yeah. Um, which to be fair, this isn't exactly fridging because it turns out that she's actually in on it the whole time. She was Romeo and Julietting him. I know she was just using like a. Oh, we'll get to this later, but it's so stupid where she's like, it slowed down my heartbeat. So, like, but, <laughs> but anyway, so he has man pain. Also, I'm really upset because her top is just ruined. They can't even give it away. <laughs> it's just covered in blood. Um, but you know what else is destroyed? Huh. This poor man's bar. Where oh. Victor and Logan fight. <laughs> and it was like, kind of funny. He was like, you have insurance? <laughs> no. Too bad. It's like, bro, this is like like the deep woods in Canada in the 80s. There's no way this man has insurance. <laughs> so they have this big fight. Um, and Lee Schreiber, who he's the actor who plays Logan. Um, mm -hmm. Excuse me, plays Victor. Yeah. Um, he's pretty good in this movie, I think. Yeah, um, I, I think he's he's a good Wolverine, or not Wolverine, uh, saber, -tooth. saber tooth tiger. No, he doesn't have a, <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of material, like good material to work with. But I think like just presentationally, he like he looks he, he does look like a, a an animal. <laughs> no, um, he just looks. I don't know. Like I don't know. I don't know if it's like his look. Well, it's definitely his look. I don't know if it's like the material so much lends itself to it, but. He definitely, when I think Sabretooth, I think that guy. I don't think about the guy in the first movie. I'm sorry. No, this is this is the Sabretooth in my yeah. mind when I think of Sabretooth. It's the iconic performance. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so Sabretooth wins, steps on Logan's claws, which again brings another question. So then when, why wouldn't his like left hand metal claws be shorter? No, he's regenerative. It just hurts. Oh, oh, but even the claws? No, but it like literally snapped the claws off. I didn't know they grow back. Yeah. Oh. His whole, whole shin did. I thought it was just his skull. I mean, not his skull, his skin. <laughs> no, everything. No, every, everything. Everything. Okay. But anyway, so he gets his ass whooped. <laughs> so he ends up in the hospital. He wakes up and he's fine, obviously, because he's Wolverine. The striker's there and he's like, ah! <laughs> And basically he's like, I want to kill Victor. And Striker's like, you can't. 
and like, you need my help. I can help make you, you know, speaking. It, it was like, it's very vague dialogue. I feel like it was only written for the trailer. And I know because that was in the trailer. Like, I can make you into something, you know, like. <laughs> um, But this whole plan is so convoluted. So basically, he, Stryker has Victor. Or, or. Has it seem like Stryker? Uh, I'm getting all confused. Stryker what? has it so that it seems like Victor kills Kayla. Mm -hmm. So Wolverine wants to kill Victor, yes. but he can't. So Stryker's like, I can help make you stronger. Yes. So he gets him into the pool of water yes. to give him the metal claws yes. just to get his DNA yes. for Weapon 11. That's so convoluted. <laughs> but anyway, so Wolverine buys it. And... Well, he wouldn't just give him his blood willingly. No, I know, but it's just such a silly story. <laughs> so, but I will say Hugh Jackman's great as always. You know, I wouldn't say, like, he's doing a bad job. He's, you know what no, I mean? Like, he's... And, and I... He's really tapping into... He wanted this to be a character piece. Yeah, I really... You know, like, there will be blood, you know? <laughs> I really appreciate uh, you bringing that up because, like, I, I I like that he's getting into it, you know? He's, like, claiming it as his own. It's not just, like, a thing, you know? It's kind of like if, um, you know, one of the guys was, like, helped write a Bond movie or something. Like, it's not just he's invested. a character to them. He yeah, cares, it's like, yeah. Yeah. It's, like, a person. So. I mean, he's, I mean, I think he's, like, the longest running, like... I mean, he played him from 2000. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously not literally every year, but like the first X-Men came out in 2000 and then Logan came out in 2017. That's a pretty good run for yeah. a super yeah. for someone playing the same character. Yeah. And he still looks good. Damn, he doesn't <laughs> age. <laughs> I mean, even something like Robert Downey Jr., I mean, that was only 11 years as Iron Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, and they killed him. <laughs> they Spoilers! <laughs> what? I, I gave a spoiler warning. <laughs> For this movie, not <laughs> other movies. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just joking. Remember uh, when Hugh Jackman was on Ink Master for like 30 seconds? Yes. So, so <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about this when we get to Days of Future Past, but oh, Vivian really? and I like a show called Ink Master, which was on Spike TV um, about like tattoo artists, like a competition. And in promotion of Days of Future Past, <laughs> they had like an X-Men themed tattoos that they did. And then Hugh Jackman rolled up for literally two minutes to be like, Whoa, that's a nice one. All right, bye bye. And then like leaves. <laughs> but anyway, it was pretty funny. But anyway, so Logan agrees. So they go, and I like the attempt to try to mimic the flashback scenes from X Two, mm. in terms of like the way things look and like bringing it back to Alkali Lake. Mm -hmm. The why is Alkali? Lily, this just feels like just shoehorn. Like th this has the same problem a lot of prequels have, which we haven't really been talking about this movie as a prequel yet. Mm -hmm. Where it's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. Where it's like, if his main base of operations is at Three Mile Island, mm -hmm. then why are we going to Alkali Lake? Just because we set that up in the other movie, that that's where no, he gets his... No, because it gets blown up by Ryan Reynolds. No, but I'm saying, why doesn't everything take place at Alkali Lake? Oh, oh, oh. Or everything. Well, the reason why not I everything mean, takes place at Three Mile Island is because, well, we set up it happens at Alkali Lake, so we have to do that. <laughs> because then they, they just go and then they leave. Well, because he um, he hadn't found that place yet. Yep. He, he hadn't talked to his realtor about it. But, <laughs> Three Mile Island. Um, which is apparently a real um, site of a nuclear power plant. Oh, really? I did not Where? know. Uh, I think it's Pennsylvania. Oh. No, it's American. And in fact, I'll actually skip ahead to one of my trivia points here. Um, or n not trivia, but like it... Um, and the trivia talked about how this is the first time, like, they inserted X-Men characters into, like, historical events. Mm -hmm. And it was listing them all, and I was like, yeah, yeah, like, the wars. And it said the Three Mile Island incident. I was like, I thought it was, like, a made-up place. Mm -hmm. it turns out it was, like, not as bad, but it was kind of like a Chernobyl-esque thing oh. in Pennsylvania. Oh. It was a partial meltdown. It was not nearly as bad, and it wasn't, like, super devastating, but it was, like... In the 80s? Uh, yeah. I, let me look up what year. I think it was, I think it was maybe the late 70s. Oh, wow. I did um, not know that. Um, in 1979. Oh, wow. So, so the idea is that that's why the incident happens because oh, of a giant battle. <laughs> um, 
But anyway, it, let's go. if anyone's from Pennsylvania, tell us how you feel about this because at least just, I think it was in Pennsylvania. Silly. It, it's um yeah, it's near Middletown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> um, but but anywho, so um I like how he asks for the new dog tags. He's mm-hmm. like Wolverine. So do they just? How long does it take to make dog tags? He's in the water, and then and then they just cut to a random CGI shot of like dog tags being made, and then it just cuts back to the pool. <laughs> and it's like, so did they give like, if it happened really quick, that makes no sense. If it took a really long time, was he just laying there waiting for the dog tags? <laughs> I don't think they were at the same time. Um, also, th- this isn't necessarily this movie's fault because it's just like from the comics, but mm-hmm. um, I like how it's like Weapon X, and he's like X, he's like Roman numeral ten. <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, but it's X because like X Men. Even though he has nothing to do with the X Men, <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like the Powerpuff Girls Chemical X. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I will say though that this whole movie, like, like in the comics, like I don't think they ever alluded to Weapon X until they did that storyline. It's not like when they first introduced Wolverine in that Hulk comic. It was like. After the Weapon X, like we didn't really know much about his backstory. I think mm-hmm. again, I'm not a comic book person. So then, when you find out about it, when you read the comics, it's like cool. Mm. Um, but I feel like in terms of the movies, it's weird because we already kind of got hints and glimpses of it. Mm-hmm. So this movie like isn't as cool as it must have been to read like the comics origins of Wolverine, mm. because like we already kind of had an idea. Mm-hmm. In terms of the movie plot, like we already kind of knew like where he came from. We had like kind of these glimpses. Um so it kind of ruins I think the mystique, no pun intended, um <laughs> of like of like his origin. Like we already kind of knew. Yeah, I feel like the most surprising thing or like new piece of information is the 18th century or 19th century uh like Canada type of thing. Not so mm-hmm. much not so much like how he yeah. got his claws. Yeah, at least for the movies, because that had yeah. something from the comics. But that was again, that was not something that was hinted at or alluded to. Mm-hmm. Like, like this is like when you start this movie. If you don't know that from the comics, mm-hmm. you don't expect the movie to start that way. Yeah. Um, but, but anyway, so they do the procedure. He survives, and this is probably my biggest gripe with the movie. Okay. Um. Is the erase's memory thing. <laughs> That's so random. So so when you watch the glimpse... No, but I'm explain. I, w- I was going to talk about how Victor can't do the same thing, but why? Why not? Yeah, yeah I, don't know. Like, I don't know. Um, but let me explain. And tell me if you agree. So in the original movies, when they have the flashbacks to everything in X2, you know, and again, it's just like kind of these glimpses, like these like kind of sensory flashbacks almost, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you hear people talking. It's like, no memory. Have no memory. The implication is that that's when he loses his memory. Of when? When he gets when he gets the animandium claws. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. That's the implication. Yes. But I think the writers were like, oh, well, shit. If, if that's where it happens, then, well, then the movie's over. <laughs> but we want to see him with the metal claws. So he gets it at the end. So he says erase his memory. And then Logan's like... No! (laughs) And he jumps out. Yeah. (laughs) So he doesn't lose his memory at that moment. And it makes no sense. Because they basically retcon this so he doesn't actually lose his memory here. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's the reason why he remembers that moment vaguely in the original films. It's because it's like right as he's about to lose his memories. Oh. So if that's not when he loses his memories, why doesn't he have glimpses of anything else that happens in this movie after that moment? (laughs) And it's because they didn't think that through. Because they didn't think of it. They didn't think of it. And we'll save it. But then the way they do erase his memories is so fucking stupid. <laughs> it's actually so mad. Um. Really? You thought it was that bad? Like. Yes, because because they have the Animanium bullets. Yeah. And he's blowing them, and you think, oh, he's gonna try to kill him. But they have to insert this line. To, it's like this mental gymnastics where the woman's like, oh, well, that won't kill him, which, why? We established later on in the movie Logan how he wants to kill himself with an Animantium bullet. So, no. But then, but then he's like, oh, it won't, but it will erase his memory. It's like, so sh- A, it's super shoehorned in, but then B, <laughs> what's his motivation to erase his memory other than, well, when we see him in X-Men, his memories erased, so 
We gotta make sure his memory gets erased by the end of this movie. We cannot. We can't assume that it happened somewhere along the way. It has to happen in this movie. Because it's kind of like in Revenge of the Sith, where like everything that is set up for the f- episode four happens by the end of the third movie. Like, there's no like, <laughs> oh, that happened in between. Like, no, everything, everything gets set up <laughs> exactly as it gets set up, right? Um, so it just really bothered me the whole erasing is the way they do it. Yeah. Um, I think it would have even been cool if his memory gets erased halfway through and he's like trying to figure out like what he's doing. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it was just clearly like a decision just to make like the plot happen, which is it's not a very good plot anyway. So I don't know also, why they were why, so like. Why? Why were they so jumbled? What do you mean? Like, why are they writing stuff the day before? Like, because they're awful. I don't know. Like, they just. <laughs> I think they just didn't really have a clear vision of what they wanted this movie to be. Mm. Stylistically, how does, story-wise, character-wise. Like, how do you get into production and then you're like, actually, I don't really know what I want to do. Well, I mean, like, I'm, and I've, I've never made a like, multi-million dollar movie, but <laughs> I would imagine it's like you set, and this happens with a lot of movies where, you know, you set a date. It's not like, it's not like me making an indie short film. Like, I can, I, I, I make it. And I write it until I'm ready to shoot no, it. I know, but I Whereas then, like, the they whole... set hard deadlines, so it's like, we're stuck, because there's so many moving pieces, no, it's I like... No, but I, I, I thought the whole point on, like, getting funding, or, like, getting a producer for a film is, like, selling them on the story. Selling them on the well, project. Well, not, not, that's, that's a great point, but that's more, like, uh, more, usually original IP. Mm. This is something where this movie was conceived by the, you know what I mean, conceived yeah, by yeah. the studio, so to speak. Um, okay. In that, you know, there's so many moving pieces where it's like, we want an X, we want a Wolverine origin movie. Mm -hmm. So then, like, how do we make that? It's not like someone woke up and went, I have a great idea for a Wolverine origin movie. Mm -hmm. It was like, we want to make one, now let's write a story for it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? As opposed to what you're describing, like, um, I'm trying to think of like a good example, but just like any indie movie, like, Mm -hmm. like, we just watched When Harry Met Sally last night for the first time, both of us, (laughs) and we thought it was great. But, like someone was like, I have a good story to tell. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's not like you know, you know what I mean. So, hmm. so there's just a lot of. I think that's like the biggest flaw of the movie is how they handle. I just feel like that the, would just lead to a lot of wasted resources. Like, it's so much wasted resources. If you don't know what you're doing, people are starving on the street and are homeless, and yet they they spent a hundred and fifty million dollars on this. A hundred fifty million dollars. Yeah. And it made 373, but they say usually you need to make double your budget to break even because of all the advertising costs. Uh, so they really made like 73 million mm. in profit, which yeah. for a big superhero movie, because I mean, again, it's not that much, right? I mean, no, I mean, again, compared to Dark Knight, us, compared but. to Dark Knight, <laughs> yeah, compared to Dark Knight and Iron Man from the year before, yeah, like those were mega successes, huge, yeah. especially the Dark Knight, mm-hmm. which I think was like one of the highest grossing superhero movies like ever, or like one of them. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, but um, this is where we get the CGI claws, and they're horrible. <laughs> um, not so much in this scene, I think, because there's like because of the camera, and like the like like the way it's edited, like you don't notice them as much. When you see them in that bathroom, and there's just like a <laughs> static shot of those, and like this really shitty light, and it's just awful. Um, but we love these old Canadian people. Oh, they're yeah. so nice. They're honestly. Both them as like characters, but also like this section of the movie is probably the best part of the movie. <laughs> Cause we get to see like actual human beings like be human beings. Mm-hmm. And and like that's the thing is like from what I understand from the comics, Wolverine's not like an anti-hero. He's just a grumpy hero. <laughs> like he's a good dude. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. um and I think we get to kind of see that here where like we we seem get to kind of connect and like learn humanity and empathy from others. Mm-hmm. Um so it's pretty sad when they get when they get shot though. It's kind of funny like they do not get a lot like it's probably this movie is only like an hour and 45 minutes. It, it was very much an ends to means. Like, but it was really like they get introduced and I would say about 4 minutes later they get killed. <laughs> yeah. Like the actual amount of screen time is so quick. Which is so sad because like as compared to the scene in, in Logan where something similar happens when they go to a family, remember? Uh, That's like yeah. a whole oh, almost like episode. That was fucked. But yeah, I don't know. I, I feel this like, made me think of that part. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, you know what it made me think of? It made me think of uh, Martha and Jonathan. Oh, and, and Smallville. Smallville. And just yeah. the Superman mythos in general. Yeah, I mean. just like, you know, kind of like... Um, Salt of the earth, kind of good Yeah, people. just like, yeah. you know. Um, 
and something that I was thinking that they could do is maybe like keep them there. They remember him, obviously, but he doesn't remember them. So then, you know, whatever. But yeah. They did. So. Yeah. I also like how they, um, he gives Logan the jacket and that's mm-hmm. like the jacket he's wearing in the beginning of the original X-Men movie <laughs> when he's, when he's in the bar. Yeah. When he runs in at Rogue. Yeah. So that's kind of a cool, um, detail. Um, though it kind of feels like it's doing that prequel thing where it's like, Hey, we have to explain every little thing. <laughs> so it's kind of reminds me of, of my, one of my favorite Christmas films, Santa Claus is coming to town, <laughs> which is the greatest superhero origin story ever. <laughs> Um, where it's like in that movie so many times like they have like the little kids voices in it and they yeah. go now that also oh, that's how he got his red suit like that I was like yeah. so that's how he got his leather jacket <laughs> yeah um and yeah, so then we get this big action sequence <laughs> with Agent Zero and the helicopters and the motorcycle and and the, somehow like I said somehow the action effects are somehow worse than before um because we had said. I, I somewhat disagreed, mm. but I still, you know, like, like we were saying how X2, X3, like the action was getting really good. Mm-hmm. And this is just nonsense. It's just like, it looks like a video game. It's this just is, like. This is very much like macho, you know, like that's. that's it's the most 2009 movie you could yeah, possibly like, make. That's why I think like the parents or like the old couple is like a nice touch to it. Cause it's like the only time where no one is like being super macho superhero like Bleh. look at me i'm so cool type of thing. <laughs> and but you know what i was thinking this too and i don't know if this thesis really holds up because like so many evil people die too but i was <laughs> but what i was gonna say is like it's sad and it's like interesting commentary where it's like the the two people like they're the only people like trying to do the right thing mm-hmm. you know what i mean like with no because like even logan like he's doing it like he wants revenge or he's like like he's not he's not like he doesn't even really like he's not trying to liberate these mutants yeah like his his goals are very self-serving not that he's being evil or bad but just like the old people are the only people who are like just like selfless people mm-hmm. and they get it and you know, they just yeah. get it, like you know um so i thought that was kind of interesting their inclusion i think it does add like a nice little flavor to the movie mm-hmm. um where it's like oh this is like a real movie oh and they're dead um <laughs> um and i don't know if this movie i'm sure this movie did not invent this but this is like the most iconic version of it in my mind in like my memory of the cool dude walking away from the explosion like nonchalantly <laughs> yes. like like not even no obviously because it's like a fake explosion like cgi yeah, yeah. but it's like <laughs> it looks like it's literally like his hair is like gonna catch on fire but it's like that's like what i think of is like this that moment in this movie <laughs> whatever you talk about i think there's like a whole SNL sketch or something about that, like dudes walking away from explosions, like calmly. <laughs> um, so, also, poor Agent Zero. Yeah. Because in the next scene, literally right after he dies, yeah, the guy tells Striker the only thing that'll take him down is an adamantium bullet. Why didn't they tell Zero that? <laughs> what? Literally, like, like. <laughs> in, no, Why this did guy they is not equip him with the proper resources. And, and in fact, the line right before that one is Zero never stood a chance. You knew this? <laughs> what was the point? <laughs> also, wait, an adamantium bullet can stop him now? It won't just harm him and take away his memory? Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> this is what. Do you understand oh, that the whole thing about the Animandy bullet erasing his memory is just because they need a way to erase his memory? <laughs> but we've already used the Alkali Lake scene, and we and that's done. We can't do that anymore. <laughs> um, but but anyway, so this is when the movie starts to try to incorporate, like, at the last like third of the movie, uh-huh. every other mutant. <laughs> like, we got Scott. Uh, we, excuse yeah. me. We have Cyclops. We get Emma Frost. We get Gambit. We get like, everybody like else in this movie. They introduce like in like this last third. Gambit's the one with the cards. No, I know who's Emma Frost. The the his, his, uh, her sister. Yeah, the Diamond Girl. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I believe. Um, um. So they all try to insert them. Like it's a huge pivot. Yeah. So that's what I mean. That the story feels very unfocused. Like it would have been cool if this was like kind of being inserted more and more throughout. Mm-hmm. Like this idea of them rounding up different mutants and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I like them. Because I guess they, they didn't start doing that until after Logan left. I guess so. Yeah. Who, who <laughs> knows? 
You, we, we say this as if it's like, oh, well, of course we know factual. It's like, but they were the writers. They could write whatever they wanted. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I got to say, why do they got to be fat phobic? Oh, with, with the, the blob. But I believe that. I think believe he's a kid from the comics, so it's not like they're just creating a big fat guy. Oh, his name is the blob? I believe. Wait, I, thought, I thought he was like the strong man. Or he just wasn't fully his character. I think he just wasn't fully his character. Kind of like how Deadpool wasn't. Yeah, the Blob is a real character, and he's like a big fat guy. If you could kind of see on, do you see? Oh wow! Sorry, she's looking at my computer screen. Everybody. <laughs> um, so it's not that he's in the movie at all. It's just like it feels like the fatness is at his expense. Mm-hmm. Especially like with the jokes and the comments and like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And I feel like he's like just made to be grossly fat. Like it's not that he's overweight. Yeah. It's like like he's like all sweaty and he's drinking a, a slushy yeah. and his like big chin's like coming over his like his um is coming over his like it's just yeah. it just feels like a little like punching down. Yeah. So it's but again the most two thousand nine movie you could make like that's what I said. This is everything goes yeah, back to that. That that part didn't age too well. Um. But it is kind of funny. <laughs> it's like he thinks he says blob, but he just <laughs> he says, says blob. blob. But there's a reference to his name in the comments. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> um, but Will I Am is a little trickster in this scene. He's like, ooh, like go have like go fight him. Maybe he'll tell you what he does. And, <laughs> and then he st- he starts the round when he's still turned to him. So then when he turns around, he clocks him. <laughs> yeah, but Logan of course wins. Um, and Will I Am is like, damn. Because he loves saying, damn. Yeah. Because he, he finds that his body is now super heavy. So, like, even if he doesn't use his claws, he can, like, knock him out with his fist. Like, yeah. Kind of like the butt of a gun, I guess. Mm. That's which, some good strategy. Which he never... If I ever sumo wrestle anyone, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> you don't have antimantium in your... <laughs> a- adamantium. You don't have... Antimantium. <laughs> you don't have adamantium in your... <laughs> Antium. Antium. <laughs> um... But anyway, so we find out that Stryker isn't on the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, Victor goes to get Cyclops at mm-hmm. school. Um, which is interesting. It's kind of like a throwback to remember um, in the original X-Men movie, they, it was going to start. Like one of like the flashbacks in the beginning was going to have Cyclops in like his school bathroom. Mm. Remember? Um, so it's kind of like an interesting like um, little Easter egg. Like they are now bring, bringing Cyclops in, in, in high school. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Stryker's in on the whole thing. Surprise. <laughs> um. Why is he like a thing? Like. Stryker? Yeah. Like, like I get like the whole situation with his son. He's a scientist and stuff like that. But like, it's just surprising to me that he's like been such a prominent bad guy for so long. Cause like with. Magneto, like, he actually has a stake in it, right? He he is mutant. Whereas, like, sh- like with Stryker, like, he kind of... He just, just wants to kill the mutants. Basically. Yeah, he just, like, keeps his son locked up. So it's not, like, it's not really, like, oh, I'm doing it to try to get my son back. Like, blah, blah, no, blah. No. Like, I don't know. It's, yeah, I mean, and this is also, if we remember from X2, this is really the only version of Stryker that exists is, like, like, because in the comics, he was, like, a preacher. Oh. <laughs> remember? Remember we talked about that? I think so, yeah. Um, So, I don't know. I think they were just like, well, if we're going to do an X-Men origin, um, excuse me, a Wolverine origin movie, well, then Stryker has to be in it. Because that's like mm-hmm. the whole interesting thing from X2, right? Um, so, Logan and Will, um, Will I Am go to find Gambit in New Orleans because he apparently escaped from the facility on Three Mile Island. Yeah. Um, And they want to find out where it is Which and everything. I, I would have expected... Something along the lines of their powers being switched because how did he get out? Like, oh, like like switch with Will I Am's powers? Yeah, or like um, or like a yeah, he's a trickster. Quick Flash or Quicksilver. Quicksilver, like you know the teleporting or something. I don't know. He's just a trickster. He's the only one to get out. Um, I will say Gambit's pretty cool in this mm-hmm. movie. Um, he's a he's a, like a popular character from the comics and the cartoon. And they had been trying to incorporate him into the other X-Men movies, but like can never really find like a, a good way to insert him. Mm-hmm. Um and I think like the way they portray him is pretty cool, like powers wise, um, for like one scene. And <laughs> yeah. then really at the end he's just like his pilot. Like he doesn't really have his gambit he doesn't really do anything gambit y. Mm-hmm. Um I also like that actor, Taylor Kitsch from Friday Night Lights. 
So what um, what are his power? Are they like he's like a I don't even know. He's like he's like so doing like, cards and like he was doing like the thing with the cards, and I was like okay. But then in the next scene, it was like they were like lit up with like this like fuchsia like something. yeah it's like his powers are kind of like that and and then he was climbing up the wall like a damn i don't <laughs> even know like a damn squirrel or something <laughs> yeah i don't i don't i honestly don't know again my blind spot i don't really know much about him oh and also now that we're talking about <laughs> characters that don't get a lot of screen time uh uh meriwether is is it this movie? <laughs> oh yeah, the the guy from Lord of the Rings plays one of the people, yeah. like, one of like the war criminals. Kinda. Yeah, <laughs> and he gets knocked off pretty early He's, in the movie. Yeah, so early. I don't know, kind of weird, but I just wanted to give him a shout out. Apparently, they wanted I Edgar Wright for some reason to play him, Lord of the like Rings. the director. <laughs> okay. But then they realized he couldn't act. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, but anyway, um, so yeah, will it? Will I am? He gets his. He gets his. his. Yeah. He gets a spine, which I will say is pretty gruesome. I, I that was pretty cool. Yeah. Like the way they do it, like because he like tell basically that like was fucked up. It was also we like saw his spine like during like the flashes. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Um. So he did. Yeah, he did. But, but Logan, I guess, convinces Gambit to take him to Three Mile Island. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, we get to see Striker's son Jason. Mm-hmm. He's on ice. So that was a kind of a cool little throwback. Can we get to see the different colored eyes? Because mm-hmm. that was like his giveaway in the in the X two, if you remember. So, um, so he's not dead, right? He's on ice, like. Yeah, I don't know. This is again where the continuity stops making sense. So it's like because in the in the other film he was like older. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean that was later. No, um, I know, but I mean like he took him off ice. I, I guess so. <laughs> I, I see that's what I mean. It's like I, I guess know. so. Um. <laughs> And then Stryker, and then the general is like, oh, you're too close to this. Yeah. So he kills the general? Yeah. The general has a pretty good reaction face, though. He's like, <laughs> See, I'm with the general on that. Like, like what Yeah, I, you are. What I was just saying about, like, Stryker, like, like, why has no one stopped him before? <laughs> well, I guess because I get stabbed in the stomach. Yeah, it gets stabbed by anyone who tries. <laughs> anyone who tries to cross Whoops. Stryker. Yeah. Or they get or they get mauled by Victor. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so then, then Gambit brings Logan to Three Mile Island. They sneak in, and Logan finds them in the process of finishing up Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Um, which is so, he's like a pool of all the dead mutants. <laughs> Deadpool. <laughs> I, love, I love how he is. I don't know what the experiments were on Deadpool in the original comics, because uh-huh. his origin story is that he does get experimented on. Yeah, that's why he's like all fucked up. Right? Yeah, but but I don't know how close this is to that, but... <laughs> It just seems very silly. <laughs> but I like how he has, like, no um, eyelids, and so his eyes are just, like, wide open, and they're just, like... Ah. He's, just, he's It's like the clockwork orange guy. Yeah. He's just like... Ah. Um, anyway. Eyes wide and then shut, the eyes big, wide open. <laughs> but then here we get the big reveal. Yes! That not only is his bitch alive, mm-hmm. she was working with the villain the whole time. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? I had, uh, I, I was thinking something when we saw her sister. So it, it's even more interesting now that you tell me that Kayla is supposed to be Native American. But like, his her, sister does not look. Her American. sister looks very Russian, and like I, later in the other movie, she she's the the blonde lady who like in X Men First Class. Yeah, who like seduces. I was gonna the bring Russian that guy. up. Yeah, I so was gonna like, bring that up. This is where the continuity makes no sense. Well, Aren't supposedly, supposedly the director said that's not Emma Frost, but her name is Emma and has the same exact powers. Yeah, like what the fuck? So why is it not Emma Frost? But anyway, so, so I'm saying this Emma Frost in this movie. Oh, oh, oh. Um, um, still. Janie Ray Jones from Mad Men plays her in X-Men First Class. Mm. Um, but yeah, so Emma Frost, like this is where the continuity really stops making sense because mm-hmm. like this takes place in the 80s and she's like maybe like in her early 20s. Yeah. In the 60s, she's like <laughs> in her 30s. And why? It's so confusing. Um, I am confusion. <laughs> um, but, but anyway, so his girl's alive. Mm-hmm. And the explanation is so dumb that they slow her heart rate. Hey, it worked for, it worked for, what's his buns? Romeo, Juliet? Which one? But he didn't check her heartbeat. She just, she just was like asleep. Yeah. 
Well, he just assumed that she was dead. He just assumed. Yeah. But I think Logan checks her heartbeat because the whole thing is just like, it appears like I flatlined, but I really didn't. Yeah, yeah. It's like very convoluted and <laughs> contrived. Um, and then she's covered in blood with no with no wounds. Yeah, didn't he check for wounds? <laughs> or I, like, also, uh, like, what did he do with the body afterwards? Because like... Did, it, don't even think did about he, it. Did like, he, like, take her to a funeral home and then, like, she woke up and was like, it's okay. Like, I'm not a ghost. Or, like, it's like... Did he uh, just leave her in the woods and so she just got up and, like, walked home? Like... No answer makes sense. <laughs> no answer is good. <laughs> Every possible scenario is bad writing and also makes Logan seem like a bad... Like, it just, it just makes I, no sense. I was thinking about that during the movie. I was, I was like... How how did he not know? Like, if he took her home, you know, in, in whatever, to lay her on the couch or something. I don't know. I think that's something that people do, right? Is like, yeah. like she would have woken up, right? Like, <laughs> But you bring up a good point about the wounds. <laughs> but, like, wouldn't there be a bunch of scratch? Because he knows it was Victor or, like, thinks yeah. it's Victor. Yeah. So if there's no... Her shirt just, it just looks like she spilled punch on herself. <laughs> well, um, when they they the, ruined that top for nothing. <laughs> when they do the flashback, though, it, it is like they spilled punch on her. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so it's just so stupid. And he's like, she, he never, um, she never loved you. But, but they do say that she can't, um, use her powers on like Logan because like, because of their healing abilities. Yeah, like they're too yeah. powerful for it. Um, the she, Logan. Oh, she actually loved it. Logan has this whole thing where he's like, I should have known. I should have trusted my instincts. Yeah. But I don't think that makes sense because she never indicated that she didn't love him. Like, it would have been more interesting if she if if she had given some kind of indication I, that she didn't love him. And, like, I, he's like, I should have known. Like, that just like, feels like just a cliche stock line that you put into a movie when you find out that your lover betrayed you. Like, I should have known. It's like, but why? What, what, why, what, what indication does she ever give that you, now in retrospect, you're probably, like, oh, I should have known. But, like, probably. But, like, what I can see them trying to do is, like, the scene where the guy is, like, blocking the road, like... It, it wasn't the power of persuasion, like the woman's thing. Yeah. It, it was like literally her, she's a mutant. So like. <laughs> so maybe then he should have some indication that she's a mutant, but not any indication that she doesn't love him. That's what he's saying. He's like, I should have known. Oh, it's about that? Yeah, he's like, I should have known. It, I thought it would be working with Stryker. No, I think his whole point, I think maybe his whole thing just being I like, know. I can't get close to anyone. I don't know. I don't um, know. Also, the way Wolverine yells people's names is really funny. Because this one, he, he, multiple times he goes, Victor! <laughs> yeah. But then in X2, he goes, Striker! <laughs> yeah. So, um, I just thought that was funny. Um, but it is really frustrating that, like, this movie tries to, like, like center itself around this brotherhood. Yeah. Between the two of them. But they really do not develop their relationship at all. Like, they try to do a little bit of it, like... Like with like him being jealous of Logan, yeah, cause or like him at like odds when they're younger, and then they come together because I guess they're the only ones, ones of their kind, yeah, yeah. But like they still have their mom. It's not like they're alone. But but then, why? Well, well, to be fair, though, I think they do like run away. Yeah, because there's that angry mom. So they don't have the mom. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, have the I mom guess. Though. But but like they don't really develop the br- like this relationship at all. Like when Logan like could kill Victor, he's like, do it. It's like, where's that coming from? Like, why? Like, does he feel remorseful? Like, they don't really develop this at all. No one gets any development. I think he was just baiting. Him. This is like a three-hour. No, I think he genuinely seemed like he just wanted to die. <laughs> I don't know. And like, this is like a three hours worth of story. Yeah. In like an hour forty-five minutes. I'm surprised he didn't die fighting Deadpool. Does he ever? He never comes back, right? He comes back in X Men. He's supposed to be Sabretooth. I was no, like a no, yes, I know, but like, I mean, going forward in the installments, like, no, I don't think they ever have saber tooth again. Yeah, like, I, I, I figured Deadpool was like gonna kill him, but whatever. Eh. Because <laughs> like, why else would he not show? You're up thinking ever again? like a competent screenwriter, <laughs> not uh, these, these people. <laughs> hey, to give them credit, like, to do something so like it's so bold. intricate and like so long running, like sometimes. You, you might mess up the lore a little bit because there's so much to keep track of. Like, I'm so impressed with, like, showrunners. I'm like, how do you remember that? Like, I uh, don't remember that happening. Um, but, like, here's the thing is, the reason why showrunners work is because, like, they literally have something called, like, the Bible, like the show Bible, uh, where they keep track of everything, right? Whereas with this, they just, like, with reckless abandon, they just, like... <laughs> Like, oh, like, in the next one. Oh, Emma Frost was in the last one as a teenager. Oh, well, now she's in this one. Like, hey, you know what would be cool? 
not doing that character, but doing that character as a different person. Which, like, it's it's <laughs> fine. Like, I don't watch these movies, like, the way where I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Um, but, but anywho, so... Um, Wolverine, so he liberates all the mutants. He, he, you know, he decides to help Kayla free her sister and all the other mutants. Though they conveniently have Scott's eyes covered, so he doesn't recognize Wolverine later. <laughs> no, I didn't even notice that. It kind of, <laughs> like, he can't see. Like, like the things no, they put no, over I his know, eyes. No, I know. I, I knew his eyes were covered. I just didn't think about it in terms of, like, oh, he's going to see him in, like. Because then, cause then it was like, well, why wouldn't he say anything later? And Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of, this is somewhat of a tangent, but in Star Wars, mm-hmm. in episode three, um, in the very beginning, when Anakin and Obi Wan confront General Grievous on the ship, mm-hmm. General Grievous is like, "Oh, like I expected someone of your reputation to be a little bit older to Anakin," and then Anakin's like, "You're shorter than I expected," implying this is the first time they're meeting. Yeah, because of that throwaway line in the Clone Wars cartoons, mm-hmm. which takes place before Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. They have to always make it so that they never meet face to face, which makes no sense because they're central characters. So it's like always like Anakin, like the door gets locked <laughs> <laughs> or his ship goes down. But but every other character, Ahsoka fights General Grievous. Obi-Wan fights General Grievous. But because of this throwaway line that George Lucas was writing in his like basement, like, oh, you're sure that I spent on this is gonna kill. <laughs> this is gonna be great. <laughs> so this moment, this reminds me of that, where it's like, <laughs> like you know, like like oh, we want to have Scott in this movie, oh, but he can't say Logan because then it's gonna. <laughs> we have to make sure the lore stays intact. <laughs> oh, so they care about that? Do they care about that? <laughs> That's um, so funny. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> Shit like that is is hilarious. It's just it's so like, funny. It's like, like, oh, they just passed each other. Like, oh, like one's head was in a book, or like, yeah, oh, it's like, like <laughs> it's just it's just ridiculous. Um, but they um, but anyway, so then Logan has to fight Deadpool. Deadpool comes back now. He's bald. He looks like a peanut. <laughs> um, with his big cranium. Um, and. Uh, he can't talk, which is so ironic because like the whole point of Deadpool is like his his like wisecracking. Mm-hmm. So it's like very like meta, mm-hmm. like they like sew him up basically. Um, though I will say, if he was not based off of this other beloved character, this de- like this 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 v- character mm-hmm. is fine. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's a pretty cool design, like the way he basically has like Wolverine claws, but it's like his swords that come out of his. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. like I think that like in a vacuum, this is is he's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. It's just like when you could then like look at Deadpool. Mm-hmm. It's like unfortunate. You know what I mean? <laughs> I liked when they're starting their fight and um, Logan was climbing the like nuclear reactor or whatever it's called. And um, and he's like, try getting up he's here. Like, come on, come and get me. And, he and just he teleports. Just, he just teleports up there and he's like, oh shit, I just had to do all that work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was funny. But then, uh, but here's what I don't understand. So, so it's also funny. Oh, sidebar: It's also funny that like when when they're building, when they're making Deadpool, Striker's like, "Oh, will he obey my commands?" Is a guess. I thought I thought he just meant he'll like talk to Deadpool. Mm-hmm. He's like text. I am chatting him. <laughs> yeah. He's like destroy, decapitate. <laughs> He's like Oregon Trail. It's like like typing, typing it in. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. So then they start fighting, and I don't understand again because they haven't developed this relationship. Why does Victor decide to help Logan? Like I don't understand. Brothers. Like, but but they don't develop. Like, I don't believe they care about. There's plenty of brothers in movies that don't like each other. <laughs> like you get to say brothers. Well, brothers. So the two of them they fight whatever, and then they he decapitates Deadpool. <laughs> But he shoots his lasers and it destroys the nuclear reactor. And that's how he got <laughs> the three trash. mile. Yeah, that's how that happened. Um, and then we get to the best part of the movie: the memory erasing <laughs> with the dumbass bullet. Um, it's so dumb and so contrived. I already said this. Why does Striker want to do this? Like, like what's his motivation of erasing his memory other than, than the movie just needs this to happen? It, like, it doesn't make any sense. At first, it made sense. Like, like he doesn't want him to, like, 
continue to try to kill him? Like No, at first it made sense because like he just wanted him to be like his soldier, like But Victor. yeah, exactly. Back then it made sense. But like he has like a conscious, so like he obviously he's not gonna do that. Uh now I have no idea. Revenge? Question yeah, like it just—it just makes no sense. Um, the movie is just so unfocused. It just like clearly feels like they had no idea what they're doing. And again, I'm—I'm I'm not saying like I would do better. Like I'm not—I know it's—it's it's hard to write a movie, especially. I'm sure like if these guys talked about it, they'd be like, yeah, like with complete competing different interests. Like the studio wanted this, and the director wanted that, and we want to do this. And like obviously, like you're on a time crunch, and you want and you want to make it cool. You know, you want to make it appealing to the masses. So like, so I, I don't envy them. I'm just saying, like, yeah. regardless of the reason, the result is just like a mess. Um, and, but this movie ends with one of the greatest examples of the puberty of CGI technology is the de-aging of Professor Xavier. Oh. Which again, <laughs> somehow looked better three years ago. In this, he literally looks airbrushed. <laughs> like 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 pre-Instagram. You know what I mean? Like he looks like like a porcelain doll. He looks like a porcelain doll. Like he got like um like Botox or something. Like <laughs> it just looks so awful. Um but anyway, so Logan gets his memory erased and his girlfriend dies and, and she tells Stryker to go walk until you bleed and keep walking all this stuff. And then Logan's just like, I'm going to go off on my own. Yeah. And then that's the movie. Which is weird because like two seconds before he was about to go with Gambit and then all of a sudden he's like, oh, just kidding. Yeah. It's like, just, peace it, out. <laughs> it just, yeah. Um, And that's the movie. And we get two post credit scenes. One of Stryker getting confronted about um him killing the general which you would think that doesn't it seems like it's setting up something but it never pays off <laughs> well he's gonna he's gonna because he seems to have a very good reputation he's he's only having a private court with the president in x2 <laughs> he's gonna pay for his crimes um but then we get another post credit scene of deadpool mm -hmm. um he's alive which this is, kind of feels a little bit more like Deadpool because he's like looks right into the camera and tells the aunt like shh like it breaks the fourth wall which yeah. is in line with Deadpool. Yeah. Um, but that's X Men Origins Wolverine. Um, How is he still alive? And he got his hair cut off. Well, I mean, he has the I guess the regenerative healing. Who? That's what I was thinking. But like the whole thing, like the whole movie, they were talking about how like you actually like how do you actually kill Wolverine like in. And Victor, right? Is like you cut off their heads, like, like he was like, "Oh, Victor, I'm gonna cut off." Your yeah, head. it's like, just like he's like, "Do you even know how to kill me?" And he's like, "Well, oh, I'm gonna cut off your head and see if that works." I think they were hoping this would maybe be more like critically successful, hmm. and then maybe they were trying to set up like some sequels. No, I have no idea. Hmm. Um, it's never too late. But so that's the it's it's, it's the, well they did make sequels, <laughs> just not to this movie specifically. <laughs> Um, in both Deadpool and then also like other Wolverine oh, movies. Oh, he's still spry. You could make some more. They could make some more. But so that's back to X-Men Origins Wolverine. Okay. Um, so let's do a little bit of trivia. Okay. Um, I got some good trivia. Don't look at it before I say There's it. There's so much. But I'll go through quick. I'll go through quick. These are, some of these are interesting. More of these are interesting than funny. Okay. Um, this one's hilarious. But also kind of sad. Uh, and again, as always, this is from IMDb, IMDb, so no, I have no idea if these are verified. Um, two cases, oh, excuse me, two cases exist of adolescents injecting themselves with elemental mercury after having seen X-Men Origins Wolverine and incorrectly believing this would convert their bones to metal, similar to how Wolverine obtains his adamantium skeleton. So these teenagers oh injected themselves with mercury. Did they die? I, I don't know. Oh my God. Um, um well... Kids, that is not how that works. They should have. They should have. A, they should have had Logan look at the camera like, like, don't try this don't in school. Try this at home. <laughs> don't try this at home, like, kids. Like the the Captain America video. Yeah. They show it at the gym class. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, That's wild. What did they do that at school? Where the hell did they I'd, get mercury from? I where do you get mercury? I wouldn't even know where to find mercury. <laughs> the, I'm an adult. At the mercury store? Like I don't know. Um. Anyway. 
Uh, another here's another piece of trivia. Uh, in the flashback to Africa, a young black girl with white hair can be seen. This is supposed to be the young Aurora Monroe, aka Storm, mm -hmm. the future X Men member. But this scene was removed from the final cut by Pierce as a deleted scene in the DVD. So I, I don't think she was in the movie. Why was it cut? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Because this movie is bad. Oh, she's Nigerian. Nice. I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> um, Leave Leave Schreiber, who played Sabretooth, yeah, uh, was given a muscle suit to wear for his role as Victor Creed, similar to what. Uh, Vinnie Jones, the juggernaut, wore an X-Men The Last Stand. Uh, to make his physique look comparable to Hugh Jackman, 220 pound, uh, to, compared to Hugh Jackman's 220 pound figure, the suit made Schreiber feel humiliated, oh. and he requested a chance to gain real muscle. He trained for three months while filming Defiance in Lithuania, which I guess was some other movie, oh. and continued to train alongside Jackman during filming. Jackman also made Schreiber add a great deal of protein to his diet, which Schreiber called, quote, the genocide of chickens. <laughs> In the end, Schreiber gained 40 pounds and had to buy several new suits due to his back gaining several inches in width. Quote, I can't fit into my favorite suit now, but I felt like I owed it to the genre to be big. <laughs> he owed it to the genre to be big. I wish I wish he had like a like a shirt off. So scene. we could get to see get yeah, to see those like pectorals. See all that hard work paid off, but yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um this next one's interesting. Um, so Hugh Jackman expressed disappointment over this movie, admitting it fell short of his expectations and did not do the character of Wolverine justice. Subsequently, mm -hmm. he and the rest of the crew sought to do a better job with The Wolverine, which was mm -hmm. like the next Wolverine solo movie. Um, interesting. Every Friday throughout production, Hugh Jackman gave out lottery tickets to everyone on set. Unfortunately, nobody ever won. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> These are so funny. Um... <laughs> For the scenes where Wolverine gets infused with animantium, Hugh Jackman effectively spent two days underwater. Um, oh. The blob suit went through six months of modification and had a tubing system inside to cool Kevin Durant down with ice water. Oh, wow. Um, he must have been in there for a long time. Yeah. Um, when Deadpool first uses Scott Summers' optic blast, the skin around his eyes burns in a red-shaped diamond pattern. Deadpool's mask in the comics has a diamond pattern of black around the eyes. So that's yeah. kind of like a little throwback to him. Yeah, that's what I figured it was. But, I but it's like very, like, but why? Like very random. I don't know. <laughs> um, Gavin Hood, the director. Yes. Uh, and top 20th Century Fox executive Tom Rothman reportedly had clashes over the movie's creative direction. One infamous incident happened while Hood was offset. At which point, Rothman took it upon himself to have one of the sets repainted from Hood's original dark theme into something lighter. <laughs> so this was like the stuff happening during this movie. Um, Will I Am accidentally punched the camera while filming a fight scene and scarred his knuckles. Oh no! Are you okay, William? I, I wonder if if like he still has them like now, like or if it's so oh, faded. I don't know. We need to do like some like deep research, like find like <laughs> photos of, of, of Will I Am. Like, look at this, zoom in on the knuckles. You think we could like DM him on Twitter yeah. or something? Maybe. <laughs> you know what? Make that your your next course of action. Um, Wolverine's log cabin in the wilderness was constructed on a hillside in New Zealand. Mm. Unfortunately, because of incessant and very noisy high winds, the set had to be dismantled and rebuilt in a studio. So they did all of that. <laughs> Just to then take it down and rebuild it in like a studio. Wait, where were they mainly filming? In Canada? That's a good question. I don't they, know. They went all the way to New Zealand? At least for that one part. I don't know. <laughs> um, Hugh Jackman collaborated with the writers on the script as he wanted the movie to be more of a character piece compared to the other movies in the franchise. We already talked about that. Um, this is the first movie to feature the X-Men characters in the historical moments. Like we said. This one's really interesting. I did not know this. Mm -hmm. Hugh Jackman was offered the role of Tony Stark in Iron Man. Huh. But he turned it down to do this movie. Huh. So imagine an alternate universe where Hugh Jackman played. It would kind of be like how Chris Evans was in Fantastic Four, but then he was Captain America. <laughs> um, yeah. So then eventually Robert Downey Jr. was cast, which I think Robert Downey Jr. That was a much better casting. Yeah. Because it was very like, I mean, we'll talk about this if we ever do like the MCU, but it was very meta because like he was kind of playing himself mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, like kind of like. A, like kind of someone who's like kind of yeah. lost touch with who he is and like yeah. you know but oh. it would have been interesting to see an alternate universe where Hugh Jackman played Iron Man uh, he, Tony Stark he's just too nice to be Tony yeah too nice because <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. is an asshole no he, um, just, he just has that like rich yeah. asshole vibes that he um, gives well to the role <laughs> and this one is not interesting it's just funny because it's like Bleh. When, when Logan slash Wolverine escapes from the lab after obtaining his animantium claws, he escapes by clawing through a wall. 
the shape in which he claws through the wall is in the form of an X. This is foreshadowing of him joining the X-Men. Oh, uh, okay. It's like, Bleh! like anytime I see X's in this in these movies, I'm like, oh, I get it, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, he also made an X when he was protecting himself from from um, Deadpool. Yes, that's little true. Laser rays. That, that's that would be like this. This kind of trivia is along wow. lines of like the name of the movie is X Men Origins Wolverine. This is a reference to the main character being Wolverine. <laughs> um. Okay. So, in terms of the critical reception of the movie, um, on Rotten Tomatoes it has a thirty-seven percent, mm-hmm. meaning that thirty-seven percent of reviewers gave it a positive review. Um, the critical census being, though Hugh Jackman gives his all, which I agree with, mm-hmm. he can't help X-Men Origins Wolverines um, overcome a cliche-ridden script and familiar narrative. I completely agree. Mm-hmm. Um, I really do think he's giving his all. I don't think his performance is any... It's. I don't say it. I don't want to say it. Like it is worse than the other ones, but I don't say it's like drastically worse. Like I think he's still doing like the same thing he was doing in the first X Men movie and mm-hmm. the third one. I think X Two has a little bit more emotional nuance because like it's like that feels more like a character piece for Logan than this movie. Mm-hmm. And this is supposed to be like his movie. Yeah. You know. Um. And on it's the contemporary reaction is on Letterboxd it has a two point three out of five. So pretty low. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the last movie I think had like 2.8, I think. So like still not great, but this is like way worse. Yeah. I think a lot of people agreed back then that like X-Men The Last Stand was like significantly inferior <laughs> to the other two. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of people like thought it was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. But then this like continues that trend mm-hmm. of just being like even worse yeah. somehow. Yeah. Um, so how do you think this builds on the franchise? You know, in terms of, like, that evolution, in terms of, like, the quality of the movies, the focus of the franchise, um, what do you, what do you think? Well, I don't know about all of that, but (laughs) the the one thing that comes to mind is how the characters don't really see, or, like, Logan's character doesn't really seem to line up um, with how he is in the previous films. Um, that's valid. I think that's exactly what we want to talk about. It's like yeah, how the franchise because, is kind of building on itself. Because like we see him in this movie and like he seems like a very passive person. And then, you know, we everything happens, whatever. He loses his memory. And then we don't really see him as himself post all that right so it's like like who is he how is he in the world um and somehow along the lines i guess he ends up getting roped in uh underground fighting and becomes a, an angry mm. drunk so um and but you know what <laughs> that makes sense because he's doing it for money okay okay but that's why i understand with him them being in the wars Okay. Like with the bot with the with the boxing, it's like or like the cage match, it's like he's using his animalistic instincts, but there's like a reason. Like he's uh-huh. he's making money. He's okay. he's doing what he does best to make money. Yeah. Why is he in these wars? So I completely agree. It's like like who who is he? I don't know. He just seems a lot more sour, so I don't know. I'm I'm sure there's some explanation between like that delineation and like the time in between, but like I don't know. It it just seems like he would not be as grumpy like i don't know <laughs> well he's been through a lot but he doesn't remember no but even since then he's <laughs> he's been alone and he's just like an animal he i would say it's even worse he has no idea who he is has he just has he been homeless like just living on his own I think, like in I the think, woods or like i don't know i don't think it's like one static is, thing i think it's probably just are the fights like his full-time job like <laughs> i don't know there's so many unanswered. it raises it's so many unanswered so questions. many unanswered questions anyway oh. so that's what i think about um well how do you think this fits in in terms of you know what we should maybe should have been doing is like ranking them as we go like each time we watch a new one like we kind of like slot it in thought we did. no but i'm saying like rank like higher oh, oh, like, with, like each in, other. Yeah, with each other yeah not rating ranking mm. like if you were to rank these now like why don't we do that everyone ladies and gentlemen going forward we're gonna rank them okay so if you were to rank these four so far. Mm-hmm. How would you rank them? Oh, 
Uh, like from worst to best. Which one do you think is the worst one? There's only four of these. So this shouldn't be too complicated. <laughs> I don't know. Um, probably the first one. The first one's the worst one? Well, I don't really... That was the one that I didn't like as much. That's fine. No, that's that's your... Okay. Um, then what were the other ones? Uh, <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> what do you mean, what were the other ones? <laughs> then there's the one with the bridge, and then there's... Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why am I going first? <laughs> uh, I'll go first then. So, okay, okay. so easily, from worst to best, this movie, X-Men The Last Stand, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the original X-Men, and then at the top, X2. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think X-Men The Last Stand is a particularly good movie, but I gave it a six because it was at least entertaining. Like, from my own subjective point of view, like it was fun to watch it. Mm-hmm. Especially like, together, like the two of us. This movie, it just feels like it's like equally, it's like worse and not as fun. Mm-hmm. Like I was honestly kind of bored. Like for as much as stuff that's going on, I'm kind of just like, okay, like whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how I would rate them. So so you would say at the original at the bottom. I think so. That's the one at the Statue of Liberty, right? Yes. And then... Do you think X2 is better than the first one or worse? Yeah, I like that one okay. better. Okay, um, and then the third one, is that better or worse than the second one? I think that one might be my favorite. And okay. Then, and then this one would be like... Um, is Would you say this second, one's better than X2? Second favorite, maybe? I don't is know. this one better than... Or not just better, like what do you like more? X2 or this one? Mm, probably this one. <laughs> okay. So, Last Stand, Origins, X2, and then X1. At the bottom. Okay. X-Men Origins Wolverine. Which I know I'll probably be like crucified for. But, um, but you know what? It's your opinion, man. <laughs> it was so just... call the Big Lasky. That's that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> that's just like based on like my enjoyment of watching them. Not so much on like how they are. Because I'm sure like. That's all you can do. The other ones are better in terms of like story and adding to the franchise but just like in terms of my my peepers and um (laughs) you know yeah incredible okay (laughs) favorite part of the movie scene character actor line what's your favorite part of the movie Mm, i really like victor actually Mm, um okay not because he's a good guy, obviously. Um, but I don't know. I just kind of like find his character interesting. Um, yeah. I think that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to go with the old people. Oh, yeah. The old not, not necessarily just them as characters, but like that whole thing and like that dynamic and them kind of offering Logan, like we said before, offering Logan that like humanity and... and um, you know, um, they're just good people. Yeah. It makes it feel like, it makes it feel like those are re- earlier movies where it's like, yeah, there are some good people in this world. Whereas like the rest of the movie is just like cool act 2009 action movie. Like, it was so sweet, but it was also so short, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. So the last thing we're going to do is as we always do, we're going to give it a rating. Mm-hmm. What out of one to 10 or zero to 10, I guess, <laughs> uh, what would you, give this movie do you want me to recap what the numbers i i feel like the numbers mean no 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 i mean i um i would say a seven i would say like it's good it's enjoyable it's not the best um but you know like i said it, it's fun to watch it adds a i was gonna say do you think it's more like are you giving a seven kind of because it's like subjectively it's just like fun to watch for you because like well, i mean it gives, you didn't seem super head over heels about it but no, I but mean, like it 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 gives a little flavor you know to the it gives a little something to the series like you know i don't know i just thought it was i, I didn't think it was terrible well you're wrong but <laughs> so i'm gonna i think i'm gonna give this movie um a five okay. out of ten not five out of five. <laughs> a five out of ten. <laughs> For me, a five is mediocre. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, now, I was kind of going back and forth because, like, for me, a mediocre movie, like, is, like, 
boring more than anything. Mm-hmm. Like something like the movie Venom. And what's a six? Okay. It's a net positive movie. And what's a seven? Good. Okay. I changed mine to a six. Your score for this, a six? Yes. Okay. Because for me, like, honestly, for me, a five is, what I was going to say is something like Venom is a four because it takes such big swings and misses spectacularly. (laughs) So you know what I mean? But like, there were strong creative choices there, right? (laughs) Um, And then vice versa. Like the way I call um, sixes and fours, like a six is a good movie with bad parts and a four is a bad movie with good parts. Hmm. Right? Like, a four is like a net negative and a six is a net positive. <laughs> but, like, a five is somewhere in the middle where it's, like, no, like, it was more boring than anything. Like, it didn't feel like super strong choices were being made. Um, I will say some of this was funny to watch, but I think yeah, it just... Funny. I'm going to give it a five. Just mediocre. It's not the worst. But Venom, something like Venom is way worse. Mm. Um, again, because of those big swings and misses. Um, but... I mean, it had Will I Am in it, so... It did have... It, it would have been a two if Will I Am was 10. not in it. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Um, all right, so I give a five, you give a six. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it, guys, for this week's episode of Now That's What I Call a Franchise. Next week, we'll be watching the next film in the franchise, um, the 2011 film, X-Men colon, <laughs> First Class. Vivian, where can they find us? You guys can find us wherever you get your podcasts, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Franchise Podcast. We know you have many podcasting options, and we thank you for choosing us. Peace out, guys. Later, dudes. <laughs>